This is somewhat unique. It is a theater organ, as opposed to one you would find in a church. And so these were unique to the 1920s movie palaces where these instruments provided music for silent films. In the day, they built almost 11,000 of them. Today, we estimate between 500 and 600 remain. I am the president and chief executive of ATOS, the American Theater Organ Society. That's an international, actually, uh, nonprofit, all about presenting and preserving these old theater organs. What they did in producing the theater organ was try and present uh, a one-man orchestra. Uh, so that when the silent movie began and the orchestra started to play, the organ could crossfade with the orchestra and take over the accompaniment. And so you have orchestral voices like strings and flutes and oboes and trumpets and tubas and those kinds of things. But on the theater organ, what you don't have on the church organ are glockenspiels, xylophones, marimbas, the real instruments that play through the keyboard. Uh, there are tambourines and castanets and cymbals and crash cymbals and bass drums, real instruments that play through the keyboard and the pedal board that give the player the job of arranger and orchestrator as opposed to just playing notes on a, on a piece of uh, music. These things, although they have been now installed in high school auditoriums and people have put them in their private homes, these organs were built to be played in big theaters. This great acoustical environment just makes this organ sing. And the opportunity to play here is very, very special. And that great cavernous space makes the organ really sing. And it's a thrill to play. I wrote a piece for our American Theater Organ Society journal once that explained the 17 brain functions that are going on all at the same time. I tell people I can do this, but I can't balance my checkbook. Um, there, because your left foot is like the bass player in a band, your right foot is controlling volume, your left hand is doing three different things all at the same time. We almost never play with music, because if you're still trying to figure out what notes you're going to play, you cannot work your orchestra. And so there are, honestly, there are 17 simultaneous brain functions going on for the theater organist to play the theater organ properly. I can't talk to people and play at the same time. I just can't do it. Never could. Never understood how the people who played in bars and lounges could do that, but that, that's a whole never, another story. We are um, arrangers and orchestrators, and we do transcriptions. In other words, uh, no. Nobody writes music specifically for the theater organ, although our organization is toying with the idea of commissioning a piece for theater organ and orchestra. Um, but what we do is we take popular tunes and interpret them on the theater organ. And it's a simple breakdown. The foot and the left hand are like the orchestra, the right hand's the singer. And occasionally filling in where the orchestra would fill in. And so uh, if we're doing Somewhere Over the Rainbow, my right hand is playing the melody line, my left hand and foot is the accompaniment to the singer. When you think that in the 1920s there was one in every movie theater everywhere, for the most part, and big ones, they were all over, and now that there are so few, uh, and it's such a treasure um, that, uh, yes, there, there is an awful lot of labor of love involved um, at, the, at the great highest end concert level, there are only truly 18 to 20 people in the whole wide world that can present this organ in true concert fashion. Uh, it's a very distinctive art form. It's those 17 brain functions uh, and the ability to understand orchestration and arranging uh, because that's what you're doing to make, make the, the theater organ play. Right. Way more than just reading notes on the page.